Okay, everyone. Welcome to episode 32 of This Week is Live. I'm your host, Raymond Flochat from mxdwn.com. That's Mixtown. Thanks so much for joining us. So glad to see you well. Sorry we're a little late in getting on the air here. Sometimes some business things come up at the last minute and also technical glitches. Wanted to make sure we had those as nailed down as humanly possible as we get going here on the show. Lots to catch up on, lots to cover in short order. So let's just dive right into it, shall we? So first and foremost, and thank goodness, not bad news yet. Hopefully all will be well. But Madonna, the legendary pop singer famed for the most unbreakable chain of hits coming through the 80s and the early 90s, was hospitalized and is now being forced to cancel her entire tour coming up. Page Six had some of the reporting on this, which hasn't been confirmed outside of Madonna's camp or in Madonna's camp or from the, her management at this point, but essentially that claiming the Madonna was found unresponsive Saturday night and as a result of which was intubated at the hospital and but is now recovering and is out of the ICU. Madonna's longtime manager, Guy Osiri, issued a statement basically confirming that something had happened, saying, on Saturday, June 24, Madonna developed a serious bacterial infection, which led to several days stay in the ICU. Her health is improving. However, she's still under medical care. A full recovery is expected. At this time, we will need to pause all commitments, which includes the tour. We'll share more details with you as soon as we have them, including a new start date for the tour and for rescheduled shows. So the good news is improving, but not yet out of the hospital and hopefully because Madonna is a legend for very legitimate reasons that is the worst of it she continues to get better is able to get out of the hospital and make a full recovery bacterial infections are no joke then moving on into the world of movies for big DC comic superhero fans if you're like the people who are big into Superman Batman the Flash this is probably an exciting week because James Gunn who we've talked about a lot the former head you know director and writer behind the Guardians of the Galaxy movies who's now in charge of the DCEU for Warner Brothers he is going to be personally writing and directing Superman Legacy and they have announced that they have their two main stars after a rigorous series of casting calls and auditions and essentially and I will learn how to pronounce this name correctly I promise in the weeks to come david corwin sweat is going to be playing clark kent slash superman and then rachel rachel brosnahan which most people know as the marvelous mrs mazel uh will be playing lois lane according to <coughs> deadline this went a serious rigorous series of auditions as they were both being considered for the part as a part of other people in the audition process and then the last round of auditions even included the actors having to play the characters in full costume as they were auditioning for it there are reports, though not confirmed by anyone with Warner Brothers or James Gunn, that may be a part of the reason of wanting to nail this down is because there is a potentially looming SAG-AFTRA strike. And effectively, maybe they wanted to nail this down in case that strike happened and that would stop all work from being done. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more in a minute. That hasn't been confirmed as of yet, but the good news is Superman Legacy is basically off and running has its main cast and that is going to be a thing and i for one knowing james gunn and the quality that he exhibits and all the work that he does i'm very excited this will be good there hasn't been a great superman movie in a long long time and and superhero fans superman fans especially deserve a great superman movie um elsewhere and this is a kind of a fun and weird little story now right now in the box office in the movie theaters around the country, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is tearing up the box office, went off of being number one, came back and is now number one again because Miles Morales and Spider-Gwen, Ghost Spider, as she's sometimes called, these characters are beloved by children across the country right now. It's one of their most favorite things, which is their first movie, Enter the Spider-Verse, and then this new movie, the sequel, Across the Spider-Verse. But what's one of the interesting things, the eagle-eyed fans, and there's certainly plenty of obsessive Spider-Man, Miles Morales fans out there, have noticed that there are numerous versions of the movie in theaters, which is largely unheard of. I want to say it's never happened in the history of cinema before, but it isn't common that something like this, there would be numerous versions of the movie. Now reports indicate that it's not necessarily really big changes to the plot or structure of the movie, but that there's lots of key sequences where little details are different, where for example, you know, the Miguel, Miguel O'Hara character has like an AI assistant that's kind of like virtual reality at one point and one version of the movie is pointing at the character, but then other people have seen it in theaters where that character takes a selfie with an imaginary phone of the character. So lots of people have been noticing all kinds of small little 
details like that that apparently have been intentionally done. So there are different versions of the film circulating depending on where you see it in America. And this has been confirmed by one of the many editors on the film, Andy Leviton, who basically responded to user posting side by side two pieces of footage that show the differences and basically said, was wondering when people would notice. So no one in Sony has really commented on why this is happening or what was the reasoning behind doing this, but it's a thing. It is happening. Um, Elsewhere, in the world of music, and this, I guess you could see this as good news, Kesha and Dr. Luke have settled their long-standing series of lawsuits together. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar, Kesha came on the scene in the early 2010s and, you know, had a reputation being kind of a all-over-the-place pop star, you know, a party girl kind of thing. And a part of that relationship was she was working with producer and record label, you know, runner Dr. Luke. His Kimo Sabe Records was the label that she was signed to and was heavily involved in her career and the way that she did things. And they had a very public kind of falling out. And then in 2014, she filed a lawsuit alleging that he had committed sexual assault, battery, and harassment against her. And then, of course, Dr. Luke countersued, alleging defamation of character. And this has gone through numerous versions and trial and cases being thrown out of court and then going back in court. This has been going on almost 10 years now. And the bottom of the page is, without any real details and if there's any kind of financial transaction that happens, a lot of times settlements involve one party or the other paying the other money. But... They have settled their differences. Both lawsuits have been settled. They are putting them aside. And quite frankly, it's not terribly surprising. Attorneys are wicked expensive. I can only imagine what Kesha and Dr. Lou both have paid for lawyers these last nine years that this has all been going on. But effectively, each of them issued kind of cryptic but thankful statements about the ending of all of this and that it's all basically going to be wrapped up. <clears throat> Kesha said, I'm looking forward to closing the door, this door on the chapter of my life and beginning a new one. I wish nothing but peace to all parties involved. <clears throat> and then later basically indicated, only God knows what happened that night. As I have always said, I cannot recount everything that happened. Dr. Luke said in his statement, it is time for me to put this difficult matter behind me and move on with my life. I wish Kesha well. Adding, I am absolutely certain that nothing happened. I never drugged or assaulted her and would never do that to anyone. So here's to hoping all parties are happy with the outcome and things can continue to move forward in their respective careers. An interesting news that is going to bubble up in the world of movies and television, this probably, if you're a big music fan, video game fan, you're probably not going to be terribly interested in this. But in the world of movies and television, this is kind of a big deal. Comic-Con, the juggernaut that is Comic-Con, has had a rough few years like the whole rest of the country has, mostly behind the COVID-19 pandemic. Obviously, it doesn't make sense to have something in the neighborhood of a quarter million people in two buildings when there's a highly communicable airborne virus going around. But this is a thing that was starting to roll back up. I can tell you after many years of going to Comic-Con, it's a wonderful, crazy experience, but it is massively intense. I mean, it feels like you're in a building with a million people. It is that intense. If you're claustrophobic or agoraphobic in any way, if you're the kind of person who doesn't like to be in crowds, it would be hell for you. It's not the kind of thing that an average person would do unless they were a big fan of entertainment. But that being said, because of the size of the audience, the press hype that comes with it, most of the big movie and TV shows would have big showings there. They bring their A-list talent. They make big announcements there. I mean, famously, one of the years I was there when Marvel had their panel in the big Hall H room, which is where the biggest announcements happened, they announced Brie Larson as playing Captain Marvel. And then a couple of years later, Marsha Ali playing Blade the Vampire Hunter. And I mean, the place went wild. You've never really heard anything like that outside of like a 20,000-person concert before. So Comic-Con gigantic so so many people there panels you know exhibition floor all kinds of craziness going on the pandemic hits can't really happen for a couple years started to happen last year a smaller version of it did happen marvel did show up and then they were hoping that this year would be the first year that it would be back to normal back to business as normal with all of the crazy shenanigans going around san diego where the main comic con happens and takes place well what's happening is that We've talked a lot about in this show and then mixed down in our stories about the WGA strike and how the Writers Guild and the writers, you know, across Hollywood are all basically 
you know, not working right now on strike as a variety of reasons that are basically, you know, pressing issues for them, including residuals and royalties, pay rates, and a guarantee from the studios they won't use AI either in writing or in the creation of the content, which the studios as of yet haven't agreed to. So that strike is ongoing. That has made it so that all kinds of programs, shows, and movies have been halted in their production. But now, just to make things even a little bit more complicated, now there's a looming potential strike from SAG-AFTRA. Now, SAG-AFTRA is the union that essentially (laughs) is the Screen Actors Guild American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. This is essentially where actors have their union, and that's a part of the collective bargaining that the union uses in negotiating with the big companies in Hollywood as far as setting pay rates and the rules and what is fair labor. And essentially, in very comparable terms, there has been a vote that a strike might happen if a contract, a new contract, isn't met by June 30th, but it is not June 30th yet. We're close. (laughs) We're very, very close. But essentially, if that contract is not approved, if they do not get terms that are passable, SAG-AFTRA might go on strike as well. So not only will there be no writers to work on shows, which means that like when Lauren, our television editor, went into the Dallas, you know, t- uh, the the Dallas TV festival last month, where none of the writers could show up because that's a part of it. When they're on strike, they cannot be at panels or events promoting shows when their union is on strike. If SAG-AFTRA goes on strike, the same thing is going to happen for the actors and the on-screen talent. They're not going to be able to show up anywhere and promote anything. So we mentioned earlier how you know James Gunn had found his Clark Kent Superman and Lois Lane, right? Well, if SAG-AFTRA goes on strike, there's not going to be any talent that can show up to talk about it. Hey, look, we're casting this movie. We really hope that you come see it. So what's now happening, and this is according to Variety, that most of the major studios have already pulled out of Comic-Con. Kind of similar to what happened to E3 this year, where none of the major studios wanted to show. There wasn't any like strike-based reasons as to that for E3 and video games. But when it comes to the world of movies and television shows, at least so far, according to Variety, Disney, which means Marvel and Lucasfilm both, so all of your Star Wars, Mandalorian stuff, Ahsoka Tano, which everyone's really excited about, and then, of course, the giant juggernaut that is Marvel Studios, HBO, Sony Pictures, Universal Studios, and Netflix. So most of the major production houses making content right now that people are really excited about, totally not going, at least according to Variety in that. And Comic-Con is now two and a half weeks away. So I'm not saying or even trying to imply that Comic-Con will cancel. I'm sure Comic-Con will happen. There's tons of people who have already bought tickets, already made hotel reservations. They're going to (laughs) go. But the thing is, is how much content and panels can there be? as a part of what usually is the thing. Because when you go to Comic-Con, in spite of its name, it isn't usually actually an event that is essentially, you know, comic book artists and writers. You would think it would be. It's mostly movies and TV shows with the occasional video game thrown in there. And then, lastly, we talked a lot in the previous shows about E3 and Summer Game Fest and all of the exciting things that have been going on in the world of games. And of course, what looked to be at least the temporary demise of the E3 event, the Electronic Entertainment Industry Expo. Well, one of the new pieces of information that's kind of maybe leaked out, the ESA, the group behind the Entertainment Software Association, the group behind E3 has essentially kind of denied this, but within a tourism pamphlet issued by the LA Board of Commissioners, basically talking about like the prospects for tourism in the you know in terms of its uh, its additions to the LA city budget, it basically had a chart with a little asterisk on it that leaked out that essentially indicated E3 2024 and 2025 were already canceled already done now essentially a reporter from axios managed to make contact with some contact with someone at the esa and they claim still not determined they claim that it hasn't been decided yet that this is for sure done or that it is for sure happening they are saying that maybe it still will who knows we'll see so then <clears throat> today just as kind of a, a brief fun wrap up, we've talked about a lot of serious stories a lot of stories with dark consequences and a lot of like really kooky kind of, you know, (laughs) entertainment industry consequences, stuff that has to do with the making of things, how things work, what things are going on, and this is all inside baseball in some respect. I just wanted to take a moment in today's show 
And it's just kind of occurred to me a lot of the different things I've been doing and just to talk about family. Now, I'm not a family values person politically, as you know, you might hear a lot of politicians talk about, but I'm human like everybody else. Have a family, have a chosen family, have a family of my own, I'm married, have a family that is mixed down. And it is one of those things that occurs to me in this world. And the further I go in life, and I've spent my entire life chasing everything that is passion, everything that is art, trying to find everything that's good, trying to help people know about it, learn about it, understand it. But it is one of those kind of moments as a gear shift that is really helpful for me to think about and remember how in this world, and of course, when we're young, we have lots of friends. And usually then as you go forward, everyone kind of goes in their own directions. People find their own lives, families, children, professions, careers, obsessions, right? And that becomes kind of their thing. So maybe your circle of friends stays something like that. But usually you find that people kind of go their own ways as time goes on. Life happens and the consequences, the challenges, the burden of adulthood, all of those things happen. And really what you find is as time goes on, friends are everything. I love friends and I'm for every friend I can possibly ever have, always have been. But really family is everything. Those people that you have in your inner circle, those people that are there every day, those people that always have your back and a big part of family and a big part of what makes family certainly in its own way challenging is that when you're with people all the time, when they're a part of your world and your life, you get on each other's nerves. You can frustrate each other. You can make each other you know, irritated. You can find your foibles and the, the little crusty things that are irritating about each person and then essentially start, you know, antagonizing each other, start getting to a point where those things start to frustrate and cause rift and tension. But at the end of the day, what is so wonderful about that is that those like-minded people, they are there with you. They always have your back. And that's how you know their family. Now, I'm not going to get into a big theological or cultural kind of dissection here because some people are adamantly under the concept that family is only blood and I don't know I just don't see it that way I think ultimately family are the people who don't abandon you that even when things are rough even when things are hard they're still there every day even when you make mistakes even when things get rough they don't cut and run they stay they fight they're there with you, they put up with you, and then they're happy to find a way to get back to rocking smile, laughing, sharing food. I heard a story, came from Kevin Feige, of all people from Marvel Studios, talking about having spent a lot of time with Stan Lee, the legendary head of Marvel that created a lot of the famous Marvel characters. And he said that when he talked to Stan, Stan had made the case that one of the things he missed most about those early days of Marvel was that they used to spend almost every night basically getting food and sitting around a table and talking. And he said that as time went on, that was what he missed most, getting food, sitting around a table with people he admired and loved and talking. And that's the kind of thing that is one of the best things in this world are those people who are there with you, committed to you, and can be honest with you, but can be honest with you in a way that's actually helpful and productive. It doesn't have hidden agendas behind it. It's because they love and support you. It's because they cheer for you. And it's one of those things that is apparent to me in this phase of my life, the family that I come from, where I grew up, the family that is mine in this moment, my wife that I love, the home that we share together. And then also mixed down is its own family, a whole army of people who are determined and passionate about music, movies, games, and television. And then anyone who comes along for the ride, anyone who's here with us, anyone who cares enough to be paying attention to trying to understand these things, to trying to understand what makes good, to share what makes good, and to be a positive part of making this community, artistic endeavor, business, whatever you want to call it, a thing every day. It is my great joy to be a part of such a thing and to have those people in my life. And not the least of which also, because sometimes there are people in your world that don't measure up to that, who are paper thin in their own way and don't stand by you and maybe don't have that love and appreciation. They aren't there day in, day out fighting. It is all just a matter of convenience. So those people who are special, those people that are your family, that is really everything. That is one of the best things in life and all the other stuff. It's all great. It's all excitement. And, you know, I think anybody who's watched this show or heard me talk probably acutely aware that I'll be chasing things like this and that passion, that art, that creative creativity and that power 
forever. But really when it comes down to it, as great as all that is, as fun and amazing as all that is, family is the thing that will stick with you. That is the thing that really matters. Those people that are there every single day. That's it for episode 32 of This Week is Live. I'm so glad for each and every one of you. Thank you for joining us, whether it be here in the live stream or if you engage with the content when we post it after the fact on YouTube. We usually do these episodes Thursdays around 5, 36 o'clock, and then we post to YouTube a couple days later. But if it's here or if it's on YouTube or if it's on any of the social media platforms where we post clips of this, be it Instagram or YouTube Shorts or Tumblr, or Twitter, or Facebook. Thank you so much for engaging and sharing with our content. We're going to be back here each week. And as I've been promising and promising, there is a veritable avalanche of video content coming in, maybe even more shows. We'll see. So for now, once again, thank you for joining us. And we'll be back here next week with a ton more. Please join us again. Follow us on Twitch. Subscribe to us on YouTube if you don't already. And I'm so glad to see you well. Thanks.